So last week, the Democratic Party was trying to hash out details of the reconciliation proposal named the Build Back Better Act, and Kirsten Sinema stated that she was opposed to it. So rather than trying to state why she's opposed to it or pick at any particular provision within that package that she doesn't like, she chose to just abandon negotiations altogether and she left D.C. Now, her spokesperson claimed that she had a good reason. Right. She had a doctor's appointment. Turns out that was actually a lie because she was doing something else. So as Brian Tyler Cohen explains, Kirsten Sinema has left D.C. amid negotiations. Her spokesman says it's for a doctor's appointment for a foot injury. But a hotel just confirmed she will be at her PAX retreat with donors for cocktails and dinner at a high end resort and spa in Phoenix. Yeah. So that's why she wasn't in D.C. She is obstructing her entire party's agenda, refusing to even engage in negotiation. She's not even saying what specifically she doesn't like about the Build Back Better Act. She's just choosing to not participate altogether, holding up everything for everyone. And she lied about why she couldn't be there. She was with her donors. So it seems like the only way you can actually get access to Kirsten Cinema is if you're one of her multi-million dollar donors, which is why confrontations like this become a necessity because if a politician is refusing to even meet with members of Congress, then of course they're not going to engage with their constituents. But when she was at ASU, her constituents found her and they decided to confront her. And this was incredible to watch. Enjoy. Okay, I'll be back. Sit down, we want to talk to you real quick. Can we talk to you real quick? Hi, actually I am heading out. The, um, right now is a real moment that our people need in order for us to be able to talk about what's really happening. We need a Build Back Better plan right now. We, we knocked on door first. We need solutions in the Build Back Better plan. We have the solutions that we need. We knocked on doors for you to get you elected. And just how we got you elected, we can get you out of office if you don't support what you promised us. We need seven million citizenship for seven million. We need the Build Back Better plan right now. My name is Blanca. I was brought here to the United States when I was three years old. And in 2010, my grandparents both got deported because of SB 1070. And I'm here because I definitely believe that we need a pathway to citizenship. My grandfather passed away two weeks ago, and I was not able to go to Mexico and visit him because there is no pathway to citizenship. And if we have the opportunity to pass it right now, then we need to do it because there's millions of undocumented people just like me who share the same story or even worse things that happen to them because of SB 1070 and because of anti-immigrant legislation. And this is the opportunity to pass it right now and we need you to, we need to hold you accountable to what you told us, what you promised us that you were going to pass when we knocked on doors for you. It's not right. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor of human trafficking and it's because of the lack of worker protections that we don't have in the gig economy. I need you to stand by workers, lots of people who are like me, that was absolutely amazing because you know that she was seething, but she was trying to hold it together. You know she was uncomfortable. And look, here's what I would argue. Anytime Kirsten Cinema shows her face in public, she should be worried that more protesters, more constituents are going to confront and heckle her because people's lives are on the line. Those folks who were heckling her, they were actually very polite. They had real issues and they actually helped get her elected. One of them was a dreamer who was brought here when she was three years old, couldn't even leave the country to see her grandfather who was dying because our immigration system is completely broken. You had somebody who was a gig worker at the end there. And to her, this is all a game. She's lying about why she can't negotiate and get this done because she's meeting with her donors. It's despicable. This is all a game to her. So since she's not taking this seriously, you have to find her, confront her, and force her to take this seriously. Force her to explain why she's against this. And she's not going to answer you, but hell, she needs to be ashamed to show her face in public. And until she buckles, until she does what her constituents want her to do, until she does what she promised she would do when she ran for Congress, you absolutely do things like this. I think it's absolutely necessary, and I love it. But she was mad. She was not happy about that. And she released this statement, which says, Yesterday, several individuals disrupted my class at Arizona State University. After deceptively entering a locked, secure building, these individuals 
individuals filmed and publicly posted videos of my students without their permission, including footage taken of both my students and I using a restroom. In Arizona, we love the First Amendment. Oh, I'm sure you do. We know it is vital to our democracy that constituents can freely petition, protest, or criticize my policy positions and decisions. The activist group that engaged in yesterday's behavior is one that both my team and I have met with several times since I was elected to the Senate, and I will continue engaging with Arizonans with diverse viewpoints to help inform my work for Arizona. Yesterday's behavior was not legitimate protest. It is unacceptable for activist organizations to instruct their members to jeopardize themselves by engaging in unlawful activities such as gaining entry to closed university buildings, disrupting learning environments, and filming students in a restroom. In the 19 years I have been teaching at ASU, I have been committed to creating a safe and intellectually challenging environment for my students. Yesterday, that environment was breached. My students were unfairly and unlawfully victimized. Oh my God. This is wholly inappropriate. It is the duty of elected leaders to avoid fostering an environment in which honesty held policy disagreements serve as the basis for vitriol, raising the temperature in public rhetoric and creating a permission structure for unacceptable behavior. So really, she's just angry that her students were victimized. First of all, why are you teaching at ASU? They should fire you. You have nothing to offer. You're a corrupt politician. You are a case study in how money in politics destroys democracy, but you shouldn't be the one teaching that class. It should be someone else who's using you as the basis for informing others. I mean, nobody cares. This is all just bullshit. She doesn't like that she was heckled. It seems as if those protesters struck a nerve, which is all the more reason to do it again. Keep protesting her. If you see her at a restaurant, confront her protest politely of course you're not going to endanger her or assault her or anything but i think that politicians if they do things like what she's doing brazenly disregarding what her constituents and all of america wants the build back better act is incredibly popular if she's going to do things like this then i think this is the only way you really get their attention and it worked I mean, that's proof that it worked because she had to release a statement. Now, in terms of what the president thinks about this, his response was honestly amazing because he was not outraged and she's obstructing his agenda. So he should be mad. And it turns out he didn't care that she was protested and protesters followed her into a bathroom. This was awesome to see. President, uh, you're talking about how you have 48 Democratic votes right now. The other two uh, have been pressured over the weekend by activists. Joe Manchin had people on kayaks show up to his boat to yell at him. Senator Sinema last night was chased into a restroom. Do you think that those tactics are crossing a line? I don't think they're appropriate tactics, but it happens to everybody. From the, <laughs> the only people it doesn't happen to are people who have Secret Service standing around them. Um, so uh, it's, it's, it's part of the process. Yes, sir. Really quickly, a lot of people have been it happens to everybody. It's part of the process. Precisely. It's happened to Joe Biden. And as people in America continue to get desperate, these sorts of protest tactics are going to become more and more common. But if you don't like your constituents who helped you get elected following you into bathrooms, one thing that you can do is you can stop fucking them over, perhaps. That's that's one thing. But she's not. She's going to continue to get heckled in public. She's going to cry victim. And she's going to claim that other members of her party, i.e. leftist lawmakers, are the ones who's encouraging it. When in actuality, this is her own actions. Had she not left D.C. and actually tried to engage in good faith and negotiations with her party, perhaps this wouldn't have even been necessary. But she chose to leave to go to a retreat with her donors. So I'm sorry. Uh, cry me a river. Cope. Get fucked, Senator. And she's not the only one, right? Because Joe Manchin, there were protesters that showed up to his yacht. And we'll talk about that in a different video. And they confronted him for obstructing this agenda as well. So this is great. I hope that we see it again. Unless she actually stops being a corrupt corporate shill, then this should continue to happen so long as she's a member of the U.S. Senate. You serve the people, but you're only serving your donors, so they're going to get more desperate, and things like this will become increasingly necessary if you continue to do what you're doing, and that is uh, screwing them over at the behest of your corporate donors.